Today we're going to demonstrate how we can draw pictures in simple animations using Coding with Chrome. I'm going to go ahead and click the Coding with Chrome application. If you've already got that installed in your browser, it should come right up. Then once I've got that open, I'm going to click Code and Basic Coding. So we're going to use some JavaScript today to build some simple drawings and animations. So the first thing you could do just to test out how drawings work, you could use draw.circle, for example. And circle, if we give it, say, an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a radius, will draw us a circle. And you can see here we have what looks like part of a circle, and that's actually drawn uh, off the screen a little bit because 0, 0, you know, we've got a coordinate space here, but as we move out to the right, x increases, and as we move out to the bottom, y increases. So if we actually move this out a little bit, if we say 200, 200, we'll notice that our circle moves out into the coordinate space here. And if we said move uh, this to the y coordinate of 0, you'll notice we still get half a circle because it's still being drawn up here. And if we do the same, with x, 0, 200, you notice our circle comes up down here. And the circle's got a radius of 50 pixels, and it's got a gray color, which is our default. But we can add additional parameters to customize the way our circle looks. So if we want to, say, have a blue circle, we can give that as an x parameter. If we want to have a blue circle with a green line around it, we can add that as the next parameter, and you can see there's a very thin green line there. So if we want to make that bigger, the next parameter can be how wide that line should be. So if we say 20, you can see now I've got this circle that's got this nice thick line and this, uh, this nice blue center. So this is good, and I can draw a lot of circles this way. I could draw a circle here. I can copy and paste that line and draw a circle out here. You know, I could actually even use a loop, and I could draw a lot of circles for var i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And then we could draw a dot circle, uh, say, we'll, put, we'll draw a stacked line of circles. So we'll say 300 uh, i times, um, say, 100. Uh, we'll say the radius should always be 30. The color should always be black, white and the stroke color should always be black and the circle should be uh, have a stroke of eight pixels so now i can draw a whole stack of black and white circles and you can see here if i take these two circles away at the top that's going to just show me the stack of circles and you know if i scroll if i were able to scroll down you could see the whole big stack if we want to change this to only four runs of our loop you can see here we get four. If we want to make our i a little bit bigger, we can say i times 100 plus 100, and then that'll move our circles down. So it looks like we could fit about, say, six circles on our screen here. There we go. And another circle would show up off the screen if we kept drawing. So, you know, we can use loops to actually draw lots and lots of circles. In fact, I could do something like uh, four var k is equal to zero, k is less than six, k plus plus. Now I can draw full screen of circles by using say k times 100 plus 100 so now I have a whole grid of circles and you can see I've got circles starting with uh, 100 100 would be the center of this circle uh, and they just spread out here I could actually also do rectangles if I you know let's go ahead and comment this line and we'll draw a rectangle draw a rectangle we'll say 0 0 uh, then we give it a width and a height for rectangles because it's a little different. So we'll say a 300 pixel wide rectangle, 100 pixel high rectangle, and we will make the rectangle blue. So we get a nice rectangle there. And we can do the same stroke color and stroke size there. So if we said black and 12, we get a nice rectangle. And if we want to move that out a little bit, in fact, we could actually use the same loops to draw lots of rectangles. Draw dot rectangle. And we could say k times 100 plus 100, i times 100 plus 100. Uh, we'll make the rectangle, I don't know, 20 pixels wide, 15 pixels high. And we'll make it blue and black, say with a 4 pixel wide stroke. 
Now you can see we've got a whole big grid of rectangles as well. So we can use loops to draw things over and over again. And we can actually use loops to make some pretty interesting designs. And this is all great. This will all get us uh, kind of some experience in how we can draw these things. But if we want to actually manipulate them and, and kind of make them into animations, we can actually do one better. So let's go ahead and we'll create a function to create new circles for us. So we can create circles as objects, and then we can pr manipulate the properties of those objects to actually change the way the circle is drawn on our screen. So I'm going to start off by creating a function called create circle. And that's going to take an x, a y, a radius, a fill color, a stroke color, and a stroke size. And we're going to create a new object. And we're going to return this object from this function. So this function is used just to create new objects for us. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say circle.x is equal to x, circle.y is equal to y, circle.radius is equal to r, Circle dot fill color is equal to fill color. Circle dot stroke color is equal to stroke color. Circle dot stroke is equal to stroke. So now we have a, a circle that's populated with all of these different properties. And if we wanted to draw that, you know, using uh, that normal draw dot circle, we could say var c is equal to create circle. Uh, say 200, 200, 60, yellow, gray. Uh, with a stroke of, say, 7. Now if we use draw.circle, we can use c.x, c.y, just as we've populated these properties and we've returned this value as circle, that's going to, now, this variable c is now going to come, become the vari value of that variable. So c.x, c.y, c.radius, c.fill color, c.stroke color, c.stroke. That should give us a circle just as we expected. But we can actually simplify this a little bit more, and we can actually allow the circle to draw itself. So objects can have properties, which are just basic variables that are contained within the object, but they can also have methods, which is a function that's contained within this object. So if we want to take this, we can actually create a circle called, we'll say, circle.draw is equal to a new function. And circle.draw is going to use the same draw.circle but it's going to use this dot x, this dot y, this dot radius, this dot fill color, this dot stroke color, and this dot stroke. Now, instead of calling draw circle, we can just use c dot draw. And this is nice because now we can manipulate the parameters of c, of c. So if we wanted to move that circle down, we could say c dot x is equal to 300. See, that moves, the or that moves the circle to the right. If we want to move the circle down, we could use c dot y is equal to 500. And now using these simple parameters, we can actually move the circle around but just by manipulating these properties. Instead of having to figure out what each one of these means, we can actually now have a circle where we have names for each of our different properties. And that makes our circle a little bit more flexible. So if we want to say, uh, if we wanted to have a circle that, um, let's say we want to have a circle that moves, you know, we, we could draw the circle and we could uh, use some basic techniques to make this circle animate. So let's go ahead and create a function called move circles. You know, we'll create, before we do that, we'll create an array of all of our circles. So we'll say var circles is equal to new array. And we'll use this, uh, this function to move a lot of our circles around the screen. So function move circles. And what this move circles function is going to do is it's going to uh, move each one of our circles a little bit. So we're going to say for var i equals 0, i is less than circles.length, i plus plus. What we're going to do is we're going to start with our circle wherever we start it, and we're going to move that circle off the screen to the right. So uh, var circle, we'll just go ahead and get circles i here, the whatever, ele whatever object we're looking at at the moment through this loop. Uh, and we're going to refer to that as circle, just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to say, uh, let's go ahead and say circle.x plus equals 5. And what that's going to do is, this is the same as saying set circle.x equal to circle.x plus 5. And what that's going to do is move our circle a little bit. So if we, you know, right now if we were to do this, this would actually, you know, if we said circles i is equal to create circle, we'll go ahead and put it at the far left of the screen. So we'll say 100, or we'll say 50, uh, 50, we'll make the radius 25 so we can see the whole circle. 
uh, we'll go ahead and give it, make it a red circle with a blue border that's five pixels wide. And now if we draw our circle, Oh, we, we, didn't add, we didn't define what I is here. So we need to change that to circle zero. We'll go ahead and throw a zero on there. Now you can see our circles here. But we didn't actually move our circle because we haven't called the move circles function. So if we call move circles down here, we're actually not going to do anything again because all we've really done is move the circle once. You know, So if we want to have the circle move over and over and over again, we're going to need to have the move circles function call itself again. Now, unfortunately, if we just call move circles at the bottom, What's going to happen is we're going to call move circles, and then we're, move circles is going to do its thing, and then call move circles again. And there's not going to be any time for the, the computer to catch up or for the processing to catch up. So this is actually just going to get us into an infinite loop, but in a way that's not too obvious. You know, if we use uh, for var i is equal to 0 uh, true i++, plus plus, this is going to be an infinite loop as well, but you know, and this one's more obvious because we're saying while true, while forever, we're going to do this loop. Now we're saying move circles, move circles, move circles, move circles, move circles, move circles, and we're actually never going to get to the end of that. So we need to give the computer a little bit of time to think. And the way we can do that is we can actually call a function called set timeout. And set timeout can be used to call a function at some point in the future. And to call set timeout, we use the function's name, and then we pass in some other variable, that vari or some other number. That number represents the number of milliseconds we want to wait. So if we want 20 frames of animation per second, we can actually call move circles every 50 milliseconds. And that will give us 20, 20 frames. So we'll get one at 50 milliseconds, then 100, then 150, then 200, then 250, then 300, so on and so on, until we've actually moved this 20 times a second. So right now, this is still not doing anything because we're not redrawing. So if we take the draw out here, you'll notice the circle is not there. But if we say circle, oh, circle i, or I'm sorry, circle dot draw here. Now we can see that circle moving across the screen. But you can see it's not actually perfect because that circle now is leaving a trail. It's it's moving off the screen, but it's not it's not repainting it over itself. So and that's because when computers draw pictures, they tend to not clear the screen because that takes up processing cycles and they you can redraw the screen yourself. We can actually make this work but much more simply if we just create a new function. We'll go ahead and call that function clear screen. And one way we can clear the screen very easily is we can just draw a white rectangle over everything. So we'll use draw.rectangle, and we'll say 0, 0, all the way up to, say, 2,000, 2,000, white. And that'll clear our screen. So now, every time we call move circles, let's go ahead and call clear screen. Now we have a circle that moves all the way to the right. In fact, if we add multiple circles here, you know, we could actually draw uh, several circles that move all the way to the right. You know, we can use a loop here. So for var i is equal to 0, i is less than, say, 20 or 10, i++, plus plus, we will go ahead and create a new circle. So uh, circles, we can actually create a new circle by saying circles.push. That's going to add a new value onto this array. We'll call create circle. Uh, we'll say uh, or zero. Actually, let's put this yes at zero. We'll move it a little bit off the screen. We'll say uh, i times twenty for the uh, for the y coordinate, and you can see how that's going to look. You know, if we want to space that out a little bit more, we can say i times thirty or i times forty. If we want to make those actually not touching, i times fifty. There we go, and we'll give it a radius of say ten. Now we have these circles moving across the screen, all in tandem. Every circle is moving at the same time. So circles.push uh, will add that to the array. Create circle creates this new array. And now we can actually move these circles across the screen. If we want them to be, say, I don't know, purple, we can actually make the circles purple. So now they're purple circles all moving across the screen, you know, in different places. So now we can actually animate those circles somewhat. And every time we hit the refresh button here, that's going to go ahead and start our circles moving again. But uh, it would really be cool if we could actually have the circles draw themselves, uh, maybe after somebody interacts with the screen. So 
this set timeout causes us to do something called asynchronous programming. Basically what that means is that we're having something happen that's not directly initiated by our code. Something is happening later and we can actually have other forms of asynchronous programming by doing things like clicking buttons or uh, you know doing uh, having events occur on the screen. So we can actually, you know, if we want to have our circles created, uh, you know, by the user, instead of using this code here, we can cut that out. And we can actually have the, uh, the, our application or our, our document or our page here respond to user events. So on document, there are actually many, many events that we can handle. One of those is on click. So we can actually create a function here that's going to allow us to uh, handle the clicks on the screen. And if we want to just make sure that that works, we can say console.log somebody clicked the mouse, touchpad, whatever you're using to click. And if we click over here, you'll notice every time I click, I get that message. Because what's actually happening is it's saying, document, whenever somebody clicks on you, call this function. And this function is allowing me to send some message to the, to the console. So I'm going to go ahead and instead of doing that, I'm going to actually create a new circle. Circles.push. And I could create this circle you know, somewhere randomly in the space, but I actually want to use where the user clicked. Fortunately, the event that I'm, I'm getting when I call this function has that, that, that information. Event.x and event.y. And if I just go ahead and click over here, now you'll see wherever I click, I get one of those gray circles with all of those default values. And then they're all going to move over to the right of the screen. So I'm able to create this animation. And all of these circles, they're all just disappearing. They're going off to the right of the screen. But if I make my screen bigger, you'll see they're still going. And you know, if I create a few more of these, they're all going to keep going. So one of the problems here is that my array is going to grow to be extremely large because I'm never actually getting ready and rid of any of those circles. Uh, we could actually remove them. We could see when they're off the screen. We could remove them from the array. But for now, this will probably be good just to show off how we can actually interact with the screen and have, uh, have our circles created. If we want to go one step further, we could actually make these circles different colors. We could say we want the circles to be, say, 12 pixels. Maybe we'll make our circles magenta. Uh, maybe we'll make the border around them black. Maybe we'll make them a two-pixel stroke. So now I'll get these slightly different circles that are going to move off the screen. And I can do a couple other things to manipulate how they actually move. You know, I could say over here, instead of increasing them by five, maybe I want them to move really slowly. Now, you'll notice these circles are just crawling along the screen. Or I could have them animate more quickly. So now instead of 20 frames a second, what if I wanted to say have uh, 50 frames a second? I can actually change this to 20. So you get 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. So these, this, even though I'm getting a smaller X movement, I can actually make those move a little bit further or move them a little faster and a little more fluidly because my screen is updating more and more frequently. You know, so you can experiment with these. So this will give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of ability to uh, build some animated uh, drawings here and allow you to draw on the screen using basic circles and uh, rectangles. Thanks for watching.